So this is the L2, which, which session is that, our fourth one? I think it's the fourth. And we were getting ready to get the uh, logical analyzer set up, uh, but while we were trying to put the car on extender, we found this little annoying problem. We have a, a wire, which is obviously a, a mod to the car that's not connected to anything. So we have to figure out where this goes first before we can attempt anything else. So fortunately we have all the tools and I think we could uh, figure out where we were missing the wire from. This guy right here. I think that's a complete solder. That one has a hole where I think the wire uh, was attached and this is a good one. So we we'll attach it right there. Why it's so old it doesn't take solder, it's just cold jointed. Okay, so I think I got it. That's the the wire that was there before, that's the repaired wire. See if I can focus on it. There you go. And then uh, Ken had taken a picture of each board when we received the machine and it was already broken. That no, one here? Yes, this guy here. That should be touched here. So it makes us feel better, it's not us. And it has or, Alan Kay's fingerprints on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're going to try to boot it with the repair, although we looked at the schematics so and... We need to move this. Seems like it's a Trident disk modification, has nothing to do with our stuff. You never know, we could be lucky. Not ready yet, ready. Okay, push and release it. Yeah, that's it. You did 6,216. And it, <laughs> Mostly. It, it, didn't, it didn't do <laughs> anything as expected. Okay, so back to the logic analyzer. Okay. Yeah, that weird stuff I had. How many pins are they? The rungs? 18. 18. One in the middle like this. And so we'll, we'll want to get 10, 10 address lines off the, the chip. Okay. Sure. Well, so, so we want to get 10 address lines off from this chip. Okay. So we got the Alto now hooked up to the, um, to the logic analyzer. I, I, I kind of lucked out is that the, uh, the cable that the Alto uses are the same as for my HP 1000. So I had one extender right there. That was lucky. Uh, and then so we have, we have some for the microcode right on the chip. And we have most of the uh, other data of the backplane, so we use uh, four pods so far. We'll probably put uh, another few together. So right now we are just looking at the microcode. And this is my oldie but goodie uh, HP 1670 uh, G vintage analyzer. So uh, Carl, who just got an equivalent instrument, just set it up with, uh, so that takes forever. Took us half a day to get there. Uh, and I have my uh, 600 lines per minute printer just for kicks, uh, so we can print the traces. Uh, so we turn it on. We got our first good trace. Uh, should we demonstrate uh, again? See if it uh, if it works. Okay, so we do that first. Turn on. on. Then right. you hold the button. And then I will hit one. Holding the button. Now let go. That's it. 
And then we got to trace right away, huh? Mm -hmm. It went right into acquisition. So what we're showing here is the address of the micro instruction that's being executed and the task number, and then it breaks out the micro instruction. So we start out at boot with location zero, and it executes something and jumps to 152, and that's the next instruction here. This is totally unrelated retro computer fun here, but I got my 600 line per minute graphics printer working. Can you uh, print, Carl? Go. Microphone. printed uh, up to 301 actually so it gives us a nice pinout and then we give it to analysis all right and then the master of microcode can will tell us what it says so so in our first trace we start off in the, the Nova emulator which is also the boot code we write to memory a start of boot and then immediately get interrupted by the disk word task, which in a few instructions gets interrupted by a parity error. Um, parity code copies data to describe the error and then goes back to the, the disk word task. Um, it gets interrupted by the display vertical task, goes back to the disk word task, display horizontal task, cursor task, disk word task. So basically what you're seeing is the task system performing as it should with higher priority tasks, preempting the lower priority tasks, um, doing the, all the hard work things that need to be done. Um, the big problem is the parity error we got as soon as we tried to touch memory. Clearly something went wrong there. That would explain why we don't see the system booting up. Yeah. We probably have to dig into the disk card to find out what's going on. Okay, well, that's. Uh, I'm pretty psyched that we got a good trace right out of the bat with something that you can recognize where we were worried that the um, uh, the prom code that we had would be different from what we had in the documentation, right? So, so yeah, so far what we see being executed matches the proms that had been dumped online earlier and matches the source code. So this is our, our first trace, I'm told uh, I wired uh, <laughs> the task wrong but everything else should, should be <laughs> okay. So goes to Nova Emulator right memory and that's where you have your parity error this is all chinese to me i'm glad that you uh, can follow that along This should be 9, and we're getting 6. Oh. So we got the bits flipped and inverted. Um, yeah, there's just a bit flipped. Then we, what, what? Well, let's see, sector... What do you mean, the tasks is flipped? See, I, I think we, we got to check the assignment of Get back to that schematic as to which bit is supposed to be what line. Yeah, I, and I might have done it wrong because it was Pretty uh, buried. Okay. Vertical is 12. We have a uh, memory parity error right away, which is actually a double bit error, right, Ken? If uh, so, that's pretty bad. So we wired one more pod to check memory here. It's starting to get a little dense, and we need to try to get our trace with memory checking. Go for it. Yeah, it ran. Okay, got it. Nice and green. Not like, uh... Uh, and then we get another memory access at FE16. The memory ad ask, um, access at 191. At 190. Is the task number right now? 11. 11, 10. 
Okay, so it starts out at zero, which I guess could be emulator also, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, I get 13. At location three, Fox five. Oh, that's a parity error right there. That's a parity error. It's 13, a parity error. Okay, good. So we got the parity error, and then we get out of parity error, and we went to 12. Okay, so the problem is we have a hot um, parity error bit. That's not good. Yeah, all in all, I thought that was a good session, apart from the, the scare of the disconnected wire that turned out to be uh, inconsequential. It was uh, for a Triton modification, we don't use a Triton disk. Uh, but I'm glad we were able to hook up the logic analyzer. Uh, I was a little bit worried it would take us more than a day to do it. Uh, but we got it all right, uh, except for me uh, messing up the tasks a bit. But that's pretty minor. Uh, we found it right away, uh, we wired it correctly. So, backplane information was flowing fine. Uh, Carl managed to get the configuration of the analyzer, which is a tough thing to set up. He got it right first time around. Um, we, were, we were able to print relatively quickly on my big uh, HP monster here, uh, which I had never used before, so uh, that uh, came, in, came in handy. And oh, the big risk was over here, uh, where we had to extend the board and uh, we don't have backplane access, so we have to probe directly on the prom. And I, I lucked out and found the, uh, we needed a cable extender too, and I found the one that did the trick in my box of HP 1000 stuff. And uh, what I was even most impressed with is that uh, Ken was able to decipher the microcode right away it's very hard to read and uh, found out that uh, right off the bat we have a parity issue which means our RAM is not good or we have uh, some kind of logic fault on the board so good thing instrumentation is working uh, so that's a big step